So this time we're going to talk about one of my favorite groups, the group of permutations. And the permutations are just all of the different ways of switching things around. Pretty simple. So let's say we have three things like this bee, grasshopper, and stag beetle, which, you know, we can represent with just the first letters B, G, and S. You can switch them around. B, S, G, G, B, S, G, S, B, and finally S, G, B, and S, B, G. So there's six different ways of switching them around. Three of them with B as the first letter, three with G, three with S. And we had three choices for that first one. And then if we chose the first one, there were two choices for the second one. And then there's only one choice for the last one. Three times two times one is equal to six. Likewise, if we have four things, which I'll put on these circles, there's four choices for the first, three choices for the second, two choices for the third, and just one choice for the last. So we have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equal to 24 different permutations of 4 things. If we have n things, then we have n times n minus 1 all the way down to 1, which gives us n factorial, which we write in exclamation point. Permutations are everywhere. Uh, so let's say we're looking at voting, for example, and you're supposed to choose your list of your favorite candidates, and maybe there's Ryla and Kenyatta and Peter Kenneth. And, you know, you can choose maybe the 1, 2, 3 ordering, or you could choose the 2, 1, 3 ordering, or the 2, 3, 1 ordering, or whatever. So there's six different ways of ordering these three candidates. And if you understand permutations, you can use the understanding to help understand voting systems. Another example is if you have a deck of cards. You know, usually you'll shuffle up the cards somehow, shuffle them a few times, and then you get some random ordering. And there's that's really just a permutation of the cards. So there's 52 factorial different possibilities for a shuffled deck of cards. Understand the permutations there, you can understand probabilities, understand things about playing card games. What about if I have some exams? I have maybe 200 students in my class, so I've got a bunch of exams that they've handed in, I need to sort them. So I ask, okay, well, what's the best way to sort all of these exams? Somehow, you know, I want to start with some permutation of these 200 exams and turn it into the ordered list, maybe alphabetical by people's names or their student numbers or whatever. Okay, so how about some particular things about permutations? So there's different ways to write them down, many, many different ways to write permutations. One is the braid notation, where we list all of the objects that we're interested in, which I'll just number one through four, and then you draw some lines showing where each one goes. So if I write this one as a list, I see 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 1, and 4 goes to 2. Yeah? So there's my set, just all of these different braids, all of these different permutations. And what's the operation? Well, let's say I have another permutation. This one sends 1 to 1, 2 to 3, 3 to 2, and 4 to 4. And then my operation is just I place the two braids side by side and then follow the arrows. So here... If I put these side to side and just follow the arrows from start to end, I see 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 1, and 4 goes to 3. So it's a composition. It really, really is a composition. Because I can also write these as functions. I can think of a permutation as a function from the set 1 up to n to 1 up to n, such that it's a bijection. It's 1 to 1 and on to. Here, sigma of 1 is 3, sigma of 2 is 4, sigma of 3 is 1 and sigma of 4 is 2 and my second permutation tau has tau of 1 is 1, tau of 2 is 3, tau of 3 is 2, tau of 4 is 4 and then the composition of these two functions is tau of sigma. Tau of sigma of 1 is 2, tau of sigma of 2 is 4, then 3, then, or sorry, then 1, then 3 which is exactly what putting those braids side by side did. Now, once we have a set and an operation, we really need to actually check that it forms a group. So remember, there's four things to check. So if I take a permutation, it's just like mixing things up somehow. And if I mix things up one way, then mix those mixed up things another way, I get another mix-up. So permutation composed with the permutation is still a permutation. The identity element in the braid notation is really easy to draw. You just have all of the straight lines straight across. And if you compose that with anything, you'll get the same thing back. So therefore, that's an identity element. So we have an identity. How about inverses? Everything needs to have an inverse. But that's easy. If I have some things that are mixed up, I can always sort them and get the list of things just in their original order, which is the identity element. 
So we can always sort. That means we always have inverses. How about associativity? This is actually really nice with the braid notation. So we know about function composition, but here, you know, we can write a composition of three things. And the composition, when we are working with the braid notation, just means forgetting the middle dots. So if we forget the dots in the middle, in either order, first the first or second the second, we get the same thing. And that means that it's associative. Now the exercise is going to be to work through this check carefully and show that it works.